Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I've got a couple of Cote d'Irone rosés in front of me. You might notice that uh, the first one has got a little bit uh, missing from the bottle and it's in my glass. It's because I started talking about it and I got a weird coughing fit, so uh, I, I didn't try it. I'm back to normal, hopefully. Um, what's the difference between them? Um, well, I think Grenache is the dominant grape in both of them, both 2015s. I, I look at the colour, um, both reasonably similar in colour. First one's lighter in alcohol. I think the second one's uh, 13 and a half, but this first one is 12 and a half percent. It is a uh, Les Cerisier Cote de Rhone 2015 uh, from Boutineau. Now Boutineau is um, a UK company that in the last few years has set up some of its own wineries in, in other parts of the world and uh, in France I think they've got a place in the Loire Valley and uh, they've got this, this one in the Rhone. So uh, let's give this one a whirl. 12 and a half percent alcohol and see where we get to. Well, it smells like it's, it's got this uh, slight uh, strawberry rose hip edge to it. Uh, but behind that, uh, behind those quite um, fleshy flavours, feels like there's a little bit of, uh, of crispness in there too. Uh, it says on the back, Grenache plus some Syrah and a little bit of Sanso. Uh, maybe the Syrah is adding a little bit of freshness. I don't know. Let's try it. Yeah, nicely balanced wine. It's got this ripe red fruit character, re ripe red apple and a little bit of raspberry. But then the finish you're left with is, um, it's, it's, it, there's a crispness about it. There's a juiciness, but there's this crispness. You know it's not a white wine. Some rosés you're not sure. You, you do them blindfold, blindfold and you'd swear it was a white wine. Here, there is that extra little bit of matière and certainly the red fruit flavours. It's nice. Not great, but nice. I would uh, happily sit and drink rather a lot of that. Let's see whether we can say the same about the second one, which is uh, Chapoutier's Belle Rouge, again 2015, uh, but this one 13.5% alcohol. Give this one a whirl. Well, it's not um, jumping out of the glass fruit-wise in the way that the first one was. Um, it smells like there's going to be maybe more of a earthy, stony character here. Uh, so more of the soil than of the fruit in the first one. Let's see whether that bears it out when I taste it. Then when you come to taste it, that's when those um, the fruit starts coming out. Um, the first one was maybe on that, that yeah, the, the, it certainly feels more red fruit like here. Here, it's, there's a peachy character, rounded, quite voluptuous peachy character. And um, it, it didn't smell like it was going to be fuller and riper, but certainly when you come to taste it, there's this roundness, this peachy roundness. Um, uh, tempered by, I, I think, peach melba. Uh, it's, it's almost as if someone's got the peaches and put a little bit of, uh, of that raspberry syrup on them. Which do I prefer? I think they're both they're both really good, actually. I, I, li I like this se uh, second one for its open-hearted friendliness. It is the fully, fuller, fleshier wine. That's the one I'd be pulling out with my barbecues. The first one, uh, with the, thanks to that crisp edge, maybe that's a more on that uh, sea fruit, but maybe you have them both with barbecues. Maybe you, you have the first one bit with your, your prawns and the second one with uh, uh, slightly singed sausages. Uh, I think they would both go down a storm. See you soon.